So if you had a magic wand and could improve things at the movies, what would you do? Now, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's not make prices cheaper right. or yeah, anything yeah, like yeah. that or yeah, just do that or, you know, just clean the seats or clean the floors. <laughs> Because everyone has a different movie-going experience, depending on what part of the country and what movie theaters you have available. I mean, in our area, we have AMC and Regal are the two prevalent ones here as well, too. And we sure. all have been to at least four or five different theaters within our little area. And I've even experienced ones in Chicago that are the same brand. This is more just on a general experience. Yeah. Alamo Draft House is not nationwide. So <laughs> right. if you have one of those, I am extremely jealous of you because I wish <laughs> right. I had that experience. This is a general thing that we think would make the experience just a little bit exactly. better. If this easier. were a if you were a chat GPT prompt engineer, <laughs> you would say you are someone with the power to make your movie theater better. What would you do? What would you do? I'm not sure logistically how mine would work, but I know that several times I have wanted to either refill my popcorn bucket or refill my soda, and I have to go out into the concourse to do it. So leaving, I would, leaving the movie. Leaving the movie theater. So I, what I'd like to do is... Now, you'd have to tuck it around. You'd have to be by, like, the front doors of the theater. Right. right. Where they have the garbage cans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd, yeah. Have, you'd have to do it there, so that way there's some sort of, like, you know, you're not disrupting the entire, you know. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But if, if, we, if you did, like. Frappuccino machine. If you, <laughs> you'd put one. <laughs> Frappuccino. <laughs> Jim, that's the butter machine at some places. It's true. That's, <laughs> well, that's my point. If you did no ice, so it's just the beverage, okay? Or you did no, like. Butter machine, or it's it's just popcorn. Yeah, you could refill it while still having earshot of the movie. Okay, so, so yes, you're missing scenes because you can't again put so it. So we out. need a main hub with tubes like a bank. Going to <laughs> end up. Yes, <laughs> yes, but I don't see why. I love your idea because I don't I don't see why you well, couldn't put a, a little screen right where you're refilling your stuff. Well, so here's you can still here's see the, here's it. the thing. Here's the thing. Okay. We have so many theaters just in our area that are the mega screens. Where, when I say mega, it's like 16 plus screens, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Where they have the auxiliary concession stands that have been built that are never yes. open. That's yes. true. Now, yes, it's a staffing thing to be able to actually staff sure. them. But if they utilize those, because, for instance, we have ones that have at least two or three auxiliary areas that have popcorn machines that have drinks now if you have a coca-cola freestyle that they're usually on but for concessions they're yeah. never open i've never seen them open That's in true. two decades yeah have never seen them open that would help right there that'd be mm. one little step you, you would yeah it'd be a step it's you a halfway there to, yeah you wouldn't be able to still hear your movie right but yes it would definitely help Get you closer it would definitely instead of going all trekking all the way to out the to main the lobby yes, yeah for sure yeah yeah little thing yeah uh mine mine would actually actually jumps right onto that because it, it is a staffing issue. Uh, so since, you know, a lot of the big chain theaters, you know, the only interaction you have with staff is you're talking to a 15 year old boy. You know, How's <laughs> getting your ticket, sir? And it's his first ever job. And he's problem. never had a job. Yep, he has yeah. no power. Uh, this like occurred to me the last time we were at the movies. Uh, I, didn't even want them to prepare anything. I just wanted a snack. And they have a little candy rack right where you pay for your stuff up at the counter. Like Sour Patch Kids, Skittles, things like that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So not even melted stuff. Yeah, it's like, like licorice candy. and, you know, yeah. whatever, all that kind of stuff. And I, I grab a bag of Swedish fish. I'm like, this is going to be my... I, I'm having fish tonight. Of course he does. And I don't know what pairs with Swedish fish. Is hey, it a white wine or is it a red a wine? A Swedish Cherry fish Coke. fresh out of the bag is actually really, really darn good. Mm. Fresh. <laughs> Clearly believe Right? It. Yes. So I'm willing to pay $6 for this bag a Swedish fish that is like a buck fifty at Dollar General, right? <laughs> I I slap it down on the counter, and the girl looks back at me, looks down at the candy, and says, "Oh no, I need help." She needed help. I'm like, I don't think it was her first day because she knew how to like scan my phone to give me credit for buying it there so I can earn points to get some other freebie that I probably won't be able to redeem because their person has a problem behind the counter. And that made me think, why don't they, for things that require no preparation, like all the candy, why not vending machines? You have them out there. You take the human out of the equation, 
They can just deal with the other stuff. The line moves faster. Bunch of vending machines require very little maintenance. You've got a much better situation. You've just cut the line down by at least a third. I love the solution part of this because he's he's creating a solution. Mm-hmm. Mine is more of a convenience. Right. Hey, here's the drinks if you want to get refilled. How do you popcorn. execute it? Right. Kind of but his is actually solving a problem because if you have a long line at the movie theaters, these movies are scheduled on time. So if you show up at 145 and your movie's at 2 and you're still five people deep in concession stands, guess who's not getting paid for those concessions? The theaters. Guess yeah. who's not getting their movie in time if they're bullish on it? The patron. Right. You fix all of that. Now, there would be some more maintenance to it, but I have seen these like in Chicago airports. There you have, I think, okay. Garrett and Nuts on Clark have vending machines that pop popcorn fresh in those vending machines. And again, that's going to take maintenance because of sure. oil and things like that. And I don't but, know if we're talking about popcorn, though. But, I mean, I'm just saying that could be another potential thing. Sure. Like, you could have a vending machine for popcorn in some of these theaters, maybe the smaller ones. Uh-huh. Even to where it's like, that's just the convenience factor right there. Again, there's maintenance to that, but it is adding to the vending machine because maybe you just need certain things where you have to have the staff involved. I would absolutely love to buy hot tamales or Butterfingers in a vending Yeah, at least As that. opposed to waiting in line at for least 20 that. minutes, it, worried about, now, hey, can you go save my seat? Because yep. I can't get... Now, here, here's, here's the thing. In Chicago AMCs, what we experience there too, and I'm sure it's just because they're, if they're so busy and they're so big, you order through a kiosk and everything just gets brought to you. Everything. There's like still a time drink. delay, though. There is in, right? with, until you actually to enjoy, but you go right up to the kiosk, you punch in everything you want, and then somebody brings right. it to you. So you're not waiting in so any it's, lines. It's, yeah, right. The, the line part comes out, and, and it's prepared food. So we'll say grilled Swedish fish. Well, no, every, everything. <laughs> whether it's your drink. Like, you have to go to Nachos your theater, and, yeah. and you're still waiting for your drink to be delivered to you, but it reduces that waiting in a concessions line. I'm so that's one of their solutions there. But again, okay. that's probably not nearly everywhere. You can't do that in Topeka, Kansas. I yeah, that's think. too fancy. Of all cities. It's i trying to come up with something random. Okay, so <laughs> mine, mine is intermissions for movies that are over two and a half hours. Like mandatory? Just a five-minute break, even. One five-minute break. I like it. That's interesting. Because uh, And the thing is, they used to exist. They did have it all the time yes. in, in theaters. And they and haven't. I only experienced it one time in my life. So did I. And, and here's the thing. Gone with the wind. That's what I saw. Gandhi. It. And here, yeah. here's the thing. It's not even asleep for me. I typically can hold it. Yeah. I rarely have ever had a moment of, oh, God, I got to go. I can wait till the end. A lot of times I push it. I try to time it. I go right before the movie starts, and I can I can last through Babylon. I could last through Killers of the Flower Moon. I've been able to last through some of these movies, and even Endgame. I've been able to last through these, but. The man with the iron kidney. There's so many people that cannot, and they miss part of the movies. Sorry, Leonardo DiCaprio and John Malkovich. The sequel to, okay, never mind. Sorry. There's so many people. That cannot, and they do miss part of the movie. Yeah. And we think yeah. about how expensive is it to go to a movie, and not everyone has pee time, or maybe it's opening night and pee time is not up to date. They miss <laughs> potentially three to four minutes of a movie, which could be very important to it. Hopefully it is. Movies right. nowadays typically don't have a lot of fluff. Right, because they have to fit so much yeah. in. So personally, I'm thinking for the sake of every other moviegoer, a quick five-minute break of what they could do it might even have to be 10 because of how many toilets are available. But just an intermission for some of these movies that are so long, I think, could truly help the movie going experience. Because uh, people are going to, they're screaming it right now. They're going, well, what about the Run P app? So let's give the Run P app some, some love, which is not a sponsor. <laughs> not a sponsor, uh, but was created by an NFL quarterback's brother. Okay. <laughs> this app actually tells you when in the movie is the right time to go potty and then tells you what you missed while you're gone. So not only have they optimized, they've gone in and figured out this is something you could probably walk out on and not miss much. And they'll tell you what you missed when you get back. So, the but, run- <laughs> but it's not always up to date if you're going on an opening night. Uh, I guess it does depend on, so it yes. depends. Somebody has to update that. And then sometimes within those apps, there are spoilers. You have to be careful. Sometimes it's great about saying, go after this moment happens without giving it away. Uh, okay, yeah. Like sometimes it does happen, but right. I think it's scheduled intermission for some of these long movies. 
Right. Now, granted, some people just cannot hold it more than 45 minutes to an hour if they're drinking a soda or something, too. And or eating, they, have, right? they, sure. have, they might have an ailment. Right. That's fine. But for the long movies, if you just give people an intermission, I think it'll help. Mm. <sighs> I don't see movie people. I don't see directors doing that. No, because so many directors have it. What? They're going to say, what, why di- kill- what director hated it? Said, was it Killers of the Flower Moon? Was it Scorsese? They said, no. You can't do that. Right. You're going to kill the momentum. They're right. going to take a, take me out of the movie. I don't know. disagree with it, actually. Yeah. I know, and I get that. I just think you're it could reminding be people who hopefully are so in tune to your work. You're reminding people that they're watching something and not living through it. Or maybe, maybe just like how we have certain options for movies that have like live captions or mm-hmm. in Spanish subtitles, this one comes with an intermission. Now that I like, I can get by. I, How's I, that? I can I can get down. Come with up with solutions where well, like you can show this. up to captions on screen. Yep. Like a lot of people prefer that. I actually said on this very show for our Bob Marley One Love, you may want to go see it with the captions on screen. Yeah, absolutely. That version. It would be great to have a version. Where there is Maybe that's an option. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like for it. For the long movies. Like this one comes like with it. a 10-minute intermission. Right. Do you if know you what you're getting into? If you don't want that one, go to the 9 o'clock show. But the yeah, the 8 o'clock show is going to have an intermission. I there we go. That. All okay. right. You have stumbled on a solution. Excellent. All right. We're just out there just fixing the world. So what do you think? What do you think would make the movie-going experience better without just saying... Cheaper, cheaper. The popcorn shouldn't be twenty dollars. Less sticky floor. Come up with a solution. We all know it's <laughs> like really. Give us a solution. What would make it just that right. much better to make it to where you are willing to pay that yeah. right. to go experience a movie at a theater and not just stream it at home? Pitch it to us like a Let Shark Tank. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Untitled Film Project podcast. To support the show, please rate, review, follow, and subscribe. Original music by Jeremy Schwartz. Special thanks to the Music City Film Critics Association. Editing and post-production by Jeremy K. Gover. Voiceover by Chad Bennett.